I'm a 12-year-old girl from Dubai, UAE. My question to you is, how can children contribute towards building a green economy? And I have a second one also, how can I ensure that my child is in a sustainable world 20 years later? <laughs> First of the indigenous people, there is a first, let me say, indigenous people is a minority group. For 100,000 years, 100 years, they have discriminated, humiliated, many of our rights have been deprived. And you know by whom? This is a group, one of the most vulnerable groups. Their right should be protected. And the real presidency presents an op excellent opportunity. We have a group called Indigenous Group. And in my department, Department of Economic Social Affairs, we have a special unit, which is part of the Sustainable Development Division, which takes care of or facilitates the discussions and negotiations on the issues related to the indigenous people. So, my answer to your question is that get to your voice heard on the concerns and interests of indigenous people through all the means available to it, including the official delegations. Make sure, because without the support of the indigenous people, sustained development is impossible. They own much of the land, they have excellent traditions, have very good cultures, they have so many means traditionally, which have been used to protect the nature and the planet. You should be able to contribute in a great way the sustainability and health of the planet. So make sure your voice will be heard and using whatever means available to you. Regarding the second question, failure? No. <laughs> That it should not be failure, and we cannot allow them to fail. Yeah. I'm not inciting you, know, encouraging you to do anything to go violent, no, no. <laughs> but if they don't agree, don't reach agreement, I don't think you should release them. We are expecting over 130 heads of state and government from all over the world, of course, and many more ministers. We are expecting over 50,000 participants. And as I said, this is a once in a generation opportunity. And you all know, 20 years ago, our leaders at that time agreed in this place, this very city, real. The Declaration of Principles and Agenda 21. They made a lot of commitments. But now, let's look back. What happened in the last 20 years? Of course, we have made some progress. And particularly, the progress in economic development. We have seen a lot of improvements, of course, in standard of living, almost everywhere, including in the least developed countries, Africa. But this economic growth and development was achieved, on many cases, at the cost of the environment, at the cost of social development, 
What we see is that in the social field, <coughs> the rich and the poor gap, instead of being narrow, is getting wider and wider. It's not fair. So the quality of life might not be that much improved. In some parts of the world, including some parts of my own country, China, the air, look at quality of air, look at quality of the water. Such kind of economic development is not sustainable. That is not kind of development what we want. We want sustainable. Today, we have 7 billion population. According to the estimation, estimate of my department, population division, by the year 2050, we are, we are going to have 9 billion population. So, with a rapid increase of the population and the rapid decreasing of resources, the current pattern of development is absolutely not sustainable. Today we are living a sort of a good life at the cost of the well-being of the future generations. It's not responsible. So therefore, we must succeed this time. Implement, act upon what you agreed 20 years ago. Don't retreat from your commitment. That's why United Nations General Assembly Resolution has provided that the objective of the conference is to renew the commitment of sustainable development. I don't know, I'm not an English speaker. Please consult the dictionary. <laughs> Oxford Dictionary. It's very authoritative. Find out what is the meaning, definition of renewed commitment. Some people interpret it as retreating from commitment using whatever a pretext. The world has changed. Of course, it changes every day. That is not the reason. So, I believe, and the United Nations General Assembly Resolution said that we should renew the commitment. We need to and act upon them. That's why they have chosen a subject called Green Economy in the context of sustainable development and poverty eradication. Be careful, boys and girls. It's not green economy per se. It's green economy in the context of sustainable development and poverty eradication. And you know too, so there is near consensus on the green economy. Well, for simplistic reasons, I know you, I call it a green economy. It is a tool, it's not a substitute of sustainable development, but it's a useful tool. <clears throat> so I hope that the real fraternity will be able to agree to utilize the green economy for short as an instrument to realize the sustainable development goals. Second theme is the institutional framework. We need, and uh, we know, and you all know, after training courses, I'm sure you know even better, uh, so many institutions in the field of economic development, social development, and environment protection. They are, of course they have all respect, their respective mandate, but on the whole they are fragmented. But how to make them work together? That's a big, big issue. Therefore, there is an agreement we should strengthen, enhance and those existing institutions, and particularly to make them work in a coherent manner, to implement whatever you know, agreements reached on the green economy, on sustainable development. Now, those are issues we cannot afford to fail. So, failure is not the choice. That's my response. Make them work hard and you know how to do it. Third issue is about what you can do as a children, eh? young people. Sustained development represents 
a change of paradigm, approach. The way we have lived, the way we are living, the way we are producing and consuming has been there for hundreds of years. To change the way of life is difficult. But let's be honest. You have a car, you say, don't use car, use bicycle. <laughs> Very difficult to convince them to give up. Right? You have air conditioning, you say, switch it off. No, very difficult. So, it is a difficult and complex issue. So therefore, it takes time to accomplish. So, but we have to begin somewhere. I personally believe, of course, you are, you are entitled to a different view. We should begin with the kids with the education of the kids. <coughs> how to use your water economically, how to use the paper economically, how to use all the material resources in the most efficient economic manner, how to protect the environment, don't destroy it. You know, there are many. It begin with the education. And then, of course, you have to learn those successful stories, practices, and as a kid, the young people. So, from the very, very small age, they let them, we cultivate them and form a habit of sustainable living. That's very important. Important, of course, I saw many of the art pictures you are doing, you know, you're already working on that. I really, I'm really encouraged. Secondly, of course, as kids, talk to your talk to your friends also and do the job together. Protect the environment. You know, you know, you know better than I do, you know, because I'm getting old, I'm so used to my own way of life. But I, I'm sure that you can, the younger generation can do better than mine. And uh, most importantly, I believe for any development, sustainable development in particular. This is primary responsibility lies with the government. The government should come up with the right strategy and the policies and make sure those policies are implemented. Of course, national level is important, local India level is important, and international level also very, very important. That's why the Rio Pasta Conference so if we, if we could agree on a set of sustainable goals covering the critical areas like the water, like the ocean, like the cities, like the energy, like the work, job, that will be a huge success. Of course, since we are short of time, and we only feel that one week away, we have, in one week time, we'll have the summit. I don't think we'll have a chance and time to work out all the details, but let us take a political decision to agree on we will launch the process for sustainable development as we have done with the Millennium Development Goals. And then elaborate and develop it after the And then by that time, please follow the negotiation right now and also follow the follow-ups of real posterity outcomes. And thank you very much. Thank you. As I'm sure you're all aware, Mr. Shah is a very busy person. Prep starts tomorrow. He's got a he's got a job to do.